God, we thank you that they'll be stronger than ever in the name of Jesus. We come against divorce in any family at Manhattan Christian Fellowship Church. We speak life on marriages. We speak healing. We thank you for Isaiah 61. Hallelujah, God, that the spirit of God is on us for he's anointed us to bind up the brokenhearted, to sit the captives free. God, we thank you that we will have our hearts break our hearts for the things that break your heart, God. That we won't look at a situation and, and be distraction by another and forget about the heart of God. That we will have the heart of God. Jesus, give us the heart of God in the name of Jesus, God. We want your heart, God. You can have our hearts so we can have your heart, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Spirit of God, have your way in this place. Satan, the Lord thy God, rebuke you in the mighty name of Jesus. We come against rejection. We come against rejection in the name of Jesus. We come against insecurity. We come against lust, perversion, and lies. We thank you that we will be a church that reflects the heart of God. We love you, Lord. We give you glory, God. We give you honor, God. There's nobody like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We have about a couple of minutes. I know the online viewers can hear me pray right now. Uh, uh, just sit your hearts for the word of God tonight at Manhattan Christian Fellowship Church. We thank you that the man of God will teach the word of God. Spirit of God, we pray against any distractions in the name of Jesus that we can hear the word. We can be hearers and doers of the word, that the word of God changes us. That the word, God, we ask you to change us tonight, God, with the word of God. Change us, God. We pray, God, that for that online viewer who's listening right now, go into their homes in the name of Jesus and be Jehovah Jireh who you are, God. Just stand and you are their provider. Just stand and you are their healer. Just stand and you are their light. Just stand and you are their peace, God, that you will be visible in their home, in the name of Jesus. So, God, have your way. We love you. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you everything, God. You alone are God. We got about two minutes before we we'll open up. And just if you're at home, if you're here in the, the, the sanctuary today, just start thanking God. Start talking to him. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt, us exalt his name. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. For the Lord is mighty. The Lord is just. He's a deliverer. Let the redeemed of the Lord, as Dr. Kinsey says, say so. So, for we've been redeemed from the hands of the enemy. Hallelujah. So, we're going to say so, God. So, we thank you, God. We give you glory. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Jesus, Christ is Lord. Let the redeemed say so. Lord, we love you, God. We thank you for the word. Blessings of the men who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sits in a seat of sinners or in the seat of the scornful. But in, in him, in his delight is in the Lord. And he meditates on the word day and night. He should be as a tree planted, hallelujah, by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. Lord God, that we will bring forth your fruit in your season, God. That we will be in the right season, God. We love you, God. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for your word. Jude 1 20 says, pray in the spirit at all times. Build yourself up on your most holy faith. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for Romans. Who can separate us from the love of God? Hallelujah. All things work together for the good that love God and all that are called according to his purpose. Lord, we thank you for your word, God. Hallelujah. If God be for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. So we got about five seconds. First lady, you about to get the mic. Hallelujah. Well, we want to welcome you to Manhattan Christian Fellowship Church. We thank God for Jesus. We thank God for tonight. The word of God is true. The word of God is mighty. The word of God is in this house today because we are carriers of the word of God. And in the word of God brings life, truth, and peace. 
So thank you for joining us tonight where our bishop is Bishop Daryl R. Martin and Lady Regina is in the house today. So let's join us for worship. We do have a couple of, of announcements. Um, next week, next, this Sunday, we'll have Bible study. But the Midwest Leadership Summit is April 27th through the 30th. Amen. It's at El Shaddai Ministries, 920 Southeast Sherman Avenue in Topeka, Kansas. Hallelujah. KCJ will be there. The recording art artist, the Stellar Award winner, will be there. We have psalmists. We have so many things going on tonight, 6.30 to 8. Tomorrow night, which is the 28th, we have it 9.30 through 11.30. And that's a worship workshop. And uh, then we have Friday, 9.20, 10.40, 11.00 through uh, 12.20, session two. So you can register, you can go, and it's going to be all, also on Saturday, it's a day session. It's a session one and section two. It's an outdoor community gathered, food, fun, and fellowship. Amen. So hey, before we get right into the word of God from our bishop, Daryl R. Martin, we have a worship song from Lady Regina. Please help us worship the Lord with me. God bless you and enjoy the service. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Give me you. Lord, give me you. Give me you. Lord, give me you. Give me you, everything else can wait. Give me you, I hope I'm not too late. Give me you, Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. It's me. Oh, Lord, I'm on my knees, crying out to you. It's me, oh, Lord, I'm on my knees, singing, give me you, give me you, just give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Give me you. Lord, 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 give me you. It's me, oh Lord. I'm on my knees, crying out to you. It's me, oh Lord. Saying, give me you, give me you, and give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Give me you. Lord, 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 give me you. Because it's me, oh Lord. I'm on my knees crying out to you. It's me, oh Lord, I'm on my knees, singing, give me you, give me you, just 
give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. Hope I'm not too late. I 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 hope I'm not too late. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Thank you, Lord. Do you feel like that? You're really going after God and you feel like you want to cry out to God and just let God know that, you know, you want more of him. You need him each and every day of your life. And so I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord again. I thank God for his traveling grace and mercy, how he watched over us while we were absent. Uh, but we're, he's returned us safely here, and I'm here tonight standing in the gap, just uh, bringing a word of the Lord to you tonight, and I'm expecting uh, God to do great things and that we're going to be edified and built up in the Lord. Yeah. And so let's pray, and then we'll go forth from there. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we come before your presence in this hour. We look to you, thanking you for all things, and acknowledging you as our God and as our Father. We know, Father, that with you, all things are possible. You told us in your word that as we uh, live our lives, as we go from day to day, from hour to hour, that we are to acknowledge you in all our ways. You promised that you would direct our path. So tonight, Lord, as I come before your people, I ask that you would direct my path, that you would order my steps, Lord, that you would speak through me to your people. As we are teaching this lesson today, uh, the believer's position in grace, Lord, that your grace is, is everlasting, Lord. Your grace is the mercy that you extend to us. Even when we're not worthy of your grace, you extend it to us because you love us and you've called us to be your children. Now help us, Father, to to be the men and women that you've called us to be, to be servants, to be followers, to be disciples, to be evangelists, to be that person that shares with others your love and how you have changed lives. And so, Father, we thank you for this time. We say, blessed is the name of the Lord our God, for it is you, Father, who always causes us to triumph and live victorious. In Christ Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen and amen. Uh, tonight, I want to share uh, some word with you. I want to actually be teaching a little bit. You know, there's a difference between preaching and teaching. Preaching is primarily a proclamation of the gospel. It's declaring the good news of the gospel, whereas Teaching is more so for edification, for building up the believer in the word of God, for helping that individuals to be rooted and grounded in the word of God, that they may be able to last, that they may be able to withstand in the evil days, that they may be able to know all that they have as believers in Christ Jesus. And so, the grace of the Lord is with us if you are a believer. And I preference this lesson by saying if you are a believer. Um, you know, when I talk about believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, I acknowledge, I know that we can say we believe. I mean, we can say we believe that Jesus is Lord. But at the same time, we don't really know that he's Lord. There's a difference, you know, we can make, I call it having a mental ascent, knowing mentally that there is a God. See, before I became a Christian, I believed that there was a God. I knew that was a God. In fact, I knew that Jesus Christ was real. In my head, I could say Jesus Christ was Lord, 
But the difference was I had never re accepted him. I had never received him as my personal God. And I had to repent in order to do that. And when I came into the knowledge of the truth, I realized that I needed to confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. And if you can do that, if you believe that, then the Bible simply says that you're saved. You're saved by God's grace, not because of what you've done, all these good things that you've done. No, but it's a simple act of you putting your trust in Jesus Christ, believing that Christ gave his life for you. And as a result of that, God saves us. It's his doing. And he empowers us with the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a sustainer. He is the person who enables us to walk this Christian life, to withstand the trials and tribulations that the enemy wants to bring against us. He is the one that makes it possible for us. So tonight, I'm going to be sharing with you from the book of Ephesians. Um, this, I think this might be the first time I've ever really did a lesson from this book. I'm going to be dealing with the first 14 verses of this chapter. And again, I'm going to be teaching. And as I share with you from the scriptures, I'm going to ask you to get you a pencil and a piece of paper and uh, get your Bible in hand or your digital device, whatever you have. And I say that because it's, it's important that you get multiple senses engaged in, in studying the word of the Lord. I'm going to be looking at some scriptures. I'm not going to try to overpower you with a whole lot of scriptures, but I'm going to give some supportive scriptures for the things that I'm sharing with you in the verse so that you will have uh, something to, to, to stand on and to build your faith on, because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And, um, and, and faith is not what you say, faith is what you do. Faith is moving and acting in line with the word of God. And the Bible says that we can do these things because God purposed it for us. So the book of Ephesians, uh, beginning at chapter 1, um, this book, the reason why I, want, I chose this book is because um, when I look, about, look at our world today and I look at uh, what's going on in our world in, in, in knowing the history of the, the, the Ephesus church, this church in Asia Minor and where it was geographically located and how it was a metropolitan city and it was a coastal city, and there was a lot of trafficking going on, coming in and coin, going out. There were shrines that, that were erected for this, for uh, multiple gods. And there was this, this, uh, this great Diana theatre theater there, where a lot of stuff was going on, perverse, crazy stuff was going on in that side in this city. You had every kind of ill thing going on in this city. Uh, Ephesus that's going on in our world today. And so as believers, sometimes we lose hope. Sometimes we get weary and we wonder where is God as we look at our surroundings and as we're, we're dealing with the issues, so many issues that we have to deal with. In our educational system, we have to deal with what the enemy is trying to push as a, a, a lifestyle on our children and and telling the parents that you can't do this in this system and all of this here. So really, you know, we need to be prayed up and we really need to be built up in our faith so we know how to stand, especially as parents. We need to take a stance and sometimes and say, hey, listen, you're not going to do this or that with my child. I don't care what you do. You need to take it. We got a system that says, listen, if you paddle your child, if you discipline your child, they coming after you. But you got to be strong and say, listen, here's my authority. My authority is the word of God, and, and I stand on the power of God's word. And as long as they in my care, I'm going to do what the Lord say, because me and my house, we're going to live for the Lord. And you have to take those type of positions right now in this society that we're living in. So, you know, I'm, this message is really, uh, this teaching is really geared around um, those who, are wondering in this society 
who they really are as Christians. Because, you know, because a person says he's a Christian or she's a Christian, you know, it's such a term now that everybody is a Christian. But the Bible tells us as believers the motto of a Christian, what God has given us to assist us, to allow us to know that we are his children. And see, the devil, the devil wants you to live in fear and in doubt. Uh, and, 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 and because of what's going on, sometimes we get beat up in this life and, and we, we're rejected by our friends. Sometimes our coworkers don't understand us because we want to uh, live a, a, a lifestyle that's, that's under the umbrella of the Holy Bible. Let me say it like that. And people don't understand you and they don't understand us. So you wonder sometimes um, uh, what is what's what is like, what it's like to just be free in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're wondering what God is at. So this evening I'm going to be answering the question of who we are in Christ Jesus as believers. And so in this chapter, there's two things that I'm going to focus on. Um, we're going to learn who we are in Christ. And secondly, we're going we're gonna to discover or learn what God has done for us as the body of Christ. And as the body of Christ, I'm talking about the church, those who make up his body. You know, I'm not talking about a building. I'm talking about those who confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, who have committed their lives to the Lord. So I'm going to read um, the chapter, the, the verses that I'm going to cover, and then I'll come back and we'll, we'll deal with one or two or three of them at a time or whatever. We'll get through this. It's pretty, pretty easy. It's obvious, uh, some of the teachings here. Uh, but I have some scriptures. It's, so I begin here in uh, King James and uh -huh. Ephesians chapter 1. Mm -hmm. This is Paul. Paul. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the uh, faithful in Christ Jesus. So notice that he's writing this letter to, to saints, those who confess Jesus Christ, but not only to those who confess Jesus Christ, but those who are faithful to Jesus Christ who live the best that they possibly can based on what they know faithfully in Christ Jesus. He says grace. So it's about grace. Grace is extended to us. He said grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Then he says blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who had it blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, according as he had it chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to his good pleasure, to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he had it abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself, yeah. that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one, that is, all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in, in, on earth, even in him, and I'll talk about that, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh 
all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his, his word. So first, first of all, so I want, you, I want to talk about, well, who are we in Christ? Well, the Bible tells us here, as we're reading this chapter, he tells us that God has given you and me an identity. It's, it's, it's important for you to understand that you might have an identity in the earth as being a cool man. You know, everybody know you for, for your reputation as being a person who is punctual, a person who is always on time, a person who loves to, to do different things and to help different people. But what is your identity? In Christ Jesus, we are ident our, as a believer, as a Christian. Now I'm going to use those words interchangeably, but they're synonymous with one another, the believer and the Christian. And when I talk about our identity as a Christian, I'm saying that our life is founded in Jesus Christ, that we identify with Christ and his teaching because we are his disciples. A disciple is a follower and a student of a teacher. And Jesus is our teacher and the word of God is what we teach because it's what he gave us as a tool to use to bring other brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. So first of all, we are called we are called, I say, his sons and his daughters. Amen. Amen. Because our identity is in him. Now, I told you I'm not going to give you a lot of scriptures because I got a lot of them running through my head right now. But let's turn to Acts chapter 17. And um, Acts chapter 17. And we're going to look at, at verse. Um, this is when, when Paul had been in Athens and he was he was doing some teaching in Athens and there was a lot of uh, philosophers and a lot of false things, God's going on, a lot of idol worshiper. But then Paul began to, to, to talk and to begin to speak. This is that sermon. He begins to talk from Mars Hill. And he said here in verse 28, as he was explaining who this unknown God was, he was saying to those who who had accepted Jesus Christ, who had heard the gospel and were, were deciding whether they wanted to accept him or not. He was saying to them, he says, for in him, he's, the in him refers to Christ. He says, in Christ we live, we move, yeah. and we have our being. In this King James it says being, but another word for being is our existence, yeah. is our identity, is in Christ Jesus. And then he says, as certain of also of your own prophets have said, for we are all his offspring. But anyway, our existence, our identity is in Christ Jesus yeah. as Lord. Now, it's, 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 a, it's a concept that may be hard for you to grasp because we are walking in this flesh. But in the heavenly realm, in the spiritual realm of which you belong, you are actually in Christ Jesus. He died for you. And when you accepted him, you became a part of his body, his body that, was, that had been bruised, his body that had hung on a tree, his body that had bled for you and me. 
And but God raised him up so that he lives, we can live and our life is in his life. Let's look at another. Let's look at another scripture. I don't have this one written on my notes, but let's look at Colossians chapter three. And then we're going to, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with this. So the first point here is about our identity. Who are we? We are co- uh, sons and daughters of the Lord Jesus Christ, and our life is in Christ Jesus. So Colossians chapter 3, I want to read this first verse here. Now, uh, <laughs> this is, it's, and I'm reading from the King James. Some of you guys... Bible may read different. I, this is my preference. I like it. I look at a lot of the other stuff too, but if I'm teaching, I'm teaching from this because I understand it. He says in verse 1, if you, ye, then, he says, if you be risen with Christ, is anybody in here risen with Christ? Let me ask that question. Have you accepted Christ? If you have given your life to Christ, then Christ has risen from the dead, and because he lives, you live with him. So if you have confessed Jesus as your Lord and you're, and you're serious about Jesus, then Paul is saying this to you. If you then be risen with Christ, he, he points us in a direction. Seek those things which are above, yeah. where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Yeah. He says to you, seek those things which are above. See, as a believer... A part of our walk with Christ, a part of our discipleship is to seek him, to understand who he is and why he is and what he is doing in our lives as individuals. And he says, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. And then he says, he he he, he uses a an intuitive and uh, introspective type of word, which is set your affections on things above and not on things on the earth. He says, because for you are dead. Uh See, the life I used to live in the flesh, I don't live that life anymore. You know why? Because that life is dead. See, now... It, and, and, and so you have to know that there's an expectation that God has of us, but he can only enforce that upon you as you understand his word. That's why it's so important for us to get to the word. He says, you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Now, that's the same thing that Paul said in Acts chapter 17, verse 27. And he says, your life is, notice he says it's hid. Well, why is it hid? Because you don't physically, visually see Christ or see yourself in Christ. In retrospect, you ought to see Christ in you at the center of your heart because he is in your heart. You you don't have to see him to believe him. Amen. Amen. And he says, when Christ, who is our life? Let me ask you. Let me pause right here. Do you feel, you know, because you've been beat up. You know, we get beat up in this world. And sometimes we forget who we are. Sometimes we wonder if we are a genuine Christian or not because of circumstances and situations. But let me tell you. Our salvation is not dependent upon how we feel, but based upon our confession in Jesus Christ and and believing that he is Lord of all. That settles it. When you get saved, it ain't about a feeling. Now, we react to the... Um, uh, to the feeling, to the emotion of the Holy Spirit. He plays on our emotions and we all may react differently, but it's not about a feeling. It's about what the word of God declares and said. That's his grace. He meets you right where you are. Now let's, because you need to know that you are who God says you are. If you have been born again and you living in Christ, you are born again. If you are born again, I can't overemphasize. If you are born again and you have confessed him as Lord and Savior and you're moving to do what he wants you to do, then listen, ain't nobody going to move you from him. 
You might fall down, but you get up. Now, if you don't get up, then maybe you were none of his. Amen? Amen. So turn with me to, to Colossians, excuse me, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, because the Bible is neutral general. general. It speaks in turn when it speaks of man, it talk, a lot of times he's talking about mankind. And so sometimes women get left out of the loop and they say, well, well, I mean, you know, when the Bible always talking about the, using the male gender and, and I said, well, no, baby, he talking about you too. Okay. And, and when you look at it in, in its, in its uh, original language, when you look, look at it, in, if you're in the New Testament, if you look at it in the Greek and some of the other writings, you'll see the expression uh, uh, the words that are used to represent both genders. So anyway, let's look at this 2 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm going to um, get your attention over to verse number. Um, uh, let, listen, let, let, now, now the word of God is true. Your identity is in Christ, but there is an expectation that God has of you. And that's why it's important for you to get to the word so you can know what God's expectation is of you. He says, and this is Paul writing to those Corinthian brothers here and sisters. He says in verse 11, he says, the verse I want is 18. I couldn't help myself. He says, O ye Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you. Our heart is enlarged. You are not straightened in us, but you are strengthened strengthen in your own bowels now for a recompense or oh, that's a reward in the same I speak as unto my children be ye enlarged also enlarged and then he says this he he he, he brings forth what he's talking about that he started in early on in the chapter he says be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship had it righteousness with unrighteousness? Yes, and what communion had it light with darkness? Uh -huh. Listen, he's not saying, he's not saying that you can't have people you know as that's not saved and all because if you didn't talk to the people who were unsaved, how would they get saved? That's right. That's right. He's just saying, listen, don't you get yoked up with them. Man, don't get it with no woman who is not a Christian. Christian woman don't get with a man who's not a Christian. And, the, and even in this day, because everybody says they are a Christian, you still get hooked up with the wrong thing. And see, sometimes you end up in relationships because God said what he has put together, let no man put asunder. Sometimes God didn't put you together. Sometimes you just got together you know, you know how the, the mind is. Well, he loved me so much, you know, if I can just get him, I know I can change him. Oh, man. You know, man, she's so fine. I know if I go, she's going to follow me wherever I go, man. And then you get out there, and that ain't the way it is. And that person is, this is their life. And, and they're doing the things that you don't do in your life. Sooner or later, here's the truth. They out there doing it anyway because he or she belongs to you. I'm going out there and see what mine doing. And, and you find yourself in a backslidden state, you know, because you got caught up. But let me, let me get back here because y'all fool around. I won't have no time to get. I'm still on number one. So let me jump down. He says, verse 15, and what concord or agreement had it Christ with Belial? And what part had he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement had it the temple of God with idols? Is there any temple of God in the house today? It, you're a temple because God dwells in this house. He says, for you are the temple of the living God, as God had it said in the Old Testament, I will dwell in them. And notice this. He says, I will walk in them. Amen. I will walk in them 
and uh, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Yeah. Wherefore, he said, therefore, come out from among them, and be you separate, said it the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And then he says, then he says, notice what he says when you get that. See, we have to meet the conditions in a lot of things that God is sharing with us. He says, then will I receive you. So if you're in that other place, then you're in a position that God can't receive you. No matter how much you want to receive him, he won't receive you until you listen to what the word of God said. We can presume to know more than God when we take matters into our own hand and begin to say that now God is not really like that. This, you know, but anyway, but then here's the verse that I want you to know that God is, is not, you know, he, he's for us all. And this is verse 18. He says, uh, I will receive you in verse 17. Then he says, 18, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters. And Paul puts God's stamp of approval on him. Said it, the Lord Almighty. That settles it. God is not discriminating against women. God is open to anybody who calls upon his name. Because those of us who know the truth understand that in heaven there is neither male nor female. See, there's neither Jew nor Gentile. Come on now, y'all. Let me, y'all know a little bit about that. Okay. Okay. So if you will come out from among them. God says, I will receive you and be sons and you will be my daughters. This is who you are. You are sons and daughters of Jesus Christ, of the God, the Father. Don't let anybody talk you out of who you are. You're not like everyone else. You're different. You've been separated from the world and called to be holy unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, this is some good stuff. Yeah, I'd get I just sit around and I'd be thinking my stuff and I I say, well Lord, I can I can talk about this a little bit here. So let's go to um back to e uh Ephesians. Amen. Let's go back to Ephesians. I'm getting hot here, so I know I'm getting stirred up here. I'm trying to keep my composure. Y'all wait till I get where I can walk some and get loose. I, I mean, I'm trying. Okay. So let's go to let's look at the first two verses here. You know, I wanted to do I wanted you to understand who you are, who you are before we got into the word of the Lord here, because all of this is indicative of a believer. This Ephesus church is a church where Jesus, he, where Paul begins to talk about in this book, he begins to talk about all the benefits that you have as a believer, a believer's position as a result of God's extension of his grace to us. So verse number three says this. He says, blessed it be, first Paul says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had, number one, he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Look at somebody and say, I've been blessed. With all spiritual blessing. With all spiritual blessing. Listen to me. Let me tell you something. Every promise, all the promises and blessings of God are still available for us today. When Paul was talking about it 2,000 years ago, listen, it's still good today. Available for us, for you and your children, and especially for those who are children of God. Yeah. Turn with me to first, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20. I told you I'm not going to give you too many, but I'm going to give you one or two to help you along. Because I know you got your pencil and you got your paper. You can say to yourself, God has blessed us. We are blessed with all spiritual blessing. Amen. Now look at what it says here in verse 20, what Paul was saying here. He says, for all, what that word all mean? Everything, all the promises of God in himself or in Christ are yea or rather yes and in him, amen, so it be, so is it, amen. 
so it is. Amen. So it's yes and amen. Look at somebody and say, so be it. So you got to confess. Listen, listen. Stop looking at life and the materialistic things of the world to determine whether you are blessed or not. Because the blessings of the Lord that he has placed upon you as a believer, as a Christian, are eternal. And this old temporal stuff going to fade away. Even you going you gonna to lay down one day. But the thing about it, when you lay down, you're going to get up. Because you're going to live forever. Amen. So not one of God's promises is no to the person who will believe and meet the condition. Notice that I said meet the conditions because there's always conditions that's associated with your walk as a Christian. That word if, that's a clause of word that expresses either a yes or a no. Either you have a choice to or a choice not to. The word let us is a word of invite, invitation. It invites you into. You have a choice to come in or to stay out. Amen. So he says here that, well, I'm saying that, that we have to meet the conditions. So let's examine the condition. Because there's always a condition to the promises of God. The promises never change, and the promises are to you if you can believe to receive them and meet the condition. Look at Proverbs, excuse me, let's go all the way back to some. I got two of them here. I'm going I'm to help you. This guy, I'm, I want you to see this. See, this is good stuff right here. I get so excited when I start talking about this stuff here. Um, let's look at um, Psalms 34. Turn with me to Psalm 34. We're going to read two verses of Scripture, verse 9 and 10. Now, he had just said this, blessed is the man in verse 8 that trusteth in him. But listen what he says in 9. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his who? His saint. Who is a saint? Us, right? You not the ain't, you the saint. And so you got to remember that in Christ Jesus, you are a saint. A saint doesn't have to die to be called a saint like the Roman Catholic Church ascribed to people in their day and age. Look, a saint is a person who has given his life to Jesus Christ. He says, oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for if there is no what? To them that fear him, to those who love him, to fear the to them that fear him, that love him, that stand in awe of him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Now, that's a promise. Amen. That's a promise. And what's the condition that's associated with this promise? They that seek. You got to do something. See, when you're meeting the conditions of the word, then God obligates himself. Now, I'm not heresy. I'm not speaking heresetical to you. The word is saying right here, but they, but they speaks of those who are to receive the promise. They that seek the Lord, and here is the promise, shall not want any good thing. And that's why sometimes we have to know what the word of God says because we get beat up and down in this world. Things are not going right and we wonder, well, am I really a Christian? Things are just not going right for me. Listen, the devil tries to get in your ear to keep you down, to keep you from saying yes to God's word. Remember, all of the word of God, all of the promises of God are yes and amen. So it is, and so it shall be. So be it. One New Testament scripture, and we're going to move it on because we've been blessed. Every, David was so blessed when he wrote the 23rd Psalm. He said, uh, the Lord is my shepherd. Then he says this, I shall not want. Why shall he not want? Because the Lord, God, is his shepherd. God walks with him, watches over him, protects him. And we've got to have that type of mindset that no matter when I feel like I'm going through the fire, 
because I am the child of God. I'm a child of the King of God. I'm not going to get down. I always quote that, that scripture by David in Psalm 16. He said, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. When tribulation comes, I'm still walking with God. When discouragement comes, I'm still walking with God. When failures come, I'm still walking with God. I'm just going to pick myself up and keep on going because I realize that there's no failure in God. Some things are for my benefit, for my edification, for my growing up. Okay, St. John chapter 15. We're going to look at something. Now, we're talking about being blessed. Amen? And meeting the conditions of the word of God. You can't do it your way and expect to receive God's blessing. It doesn't work that way. You, and, I, and I understand God's grace is sufficient. God's grace is sufficient. He, he watches over us. He forgives us. He takes care of us while we're bumping and grind, moving and falling and, and making all those mistakes in life. But at some point, we got to grow up. And so, you know, it's better not to know a thing about God than to know it and not do it. John 15 and verse 7. Everybody know this. Jesus says this. Huh? Jesus says this. He says seven. If. Now, if is what kind of word? That's that conditional word, right? If. If you abide in me, if you live with me, if you dwell in me, if you stand with me, if you walk with me and my words abide in you. See, you just, you can't, you know, you've got to be in him, but the word has to be in you. He says, you shall what? What you will, and it shall be done unto you. That's a promise. That's a promise, but you have to meet the condition. What's the condition? You got to dwell in his word, and he, he has to be dwelling in you. The spirit, the Holy Spirit is directing your path. The Holy Spirit is up front leading and guiding you, but we can't ignore the Holy Spirit. There are so many distractions in this world right now. I feel it. You know, I feel it, and I've been reading this word for a long, but I feel it, really. And I'll be saying to myself, God, if I'm feeling all these distractions, if all these things are going on, and, and I've been reading this word for so long, and I feel like I'm being pulled away, I feel like things are not going right. I say, I can't un imagine what those who are newly coming, have been only in the faith a couple of years or so, how they must feel when they're, when things are not going right, is God still with me? Yeah. How about, I messed up. The, has God abandoned me? Has God given up on No, God has not. Amen. Get up and, and, and put that behind you. Do what the word of God said. And this is true. Turn with me to 1 John and, and hold your finger right there. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. This is true. You can take it to the bank. Look at verse 8. He says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. How many of you know that the devil wants you to deceive yourself? Amen. And the truth is not in you. Yeah. See, the truth of the matter is, is that Jesus came to save sinners. Right. And what do sinners do? Sinners sin because it's their nature to sin. But God is coming to give us a new nature. The nature, his nature. But until we're strengthened and, and built in Christ, here's what he says in verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And listen what he does. And not only does he forgive us, but he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. See, this is, the, this is his grace. His mercy, he forgives us and he cleanses us. But what's the condition? You must what? Confess your sin. See, confession is a, an acknowledgement that I messed up. You, you're not trying to hide your mess up. 
You recognize that I'm on the path of righteousness, but I fell prey to the enemy's tactic, his ways. That's okay. Get up, dust yourself off, and get on your knees and say, God, forgive me. I messed up. And believe me, he going to come back at you again. He going to come back the same way. And you can't go any higher until you overcome that obstacle. Until you master that whatever that, that sin is, whatever that allurement is, whatever that trap is, until you can overcome it, you're not going any level higher. You're going to stay right there. You know they say every level there's a devil. Because God, is, God says he is conforming us to the image of his son, and we're being made like the image of his son in the, in the spiritual sense. It's not happening on the outside. It was, it's happening on the inside. And our life is, is, is motivated and directed by not our mo- emotions, not by our human nature, but by our spirit man. Amen. All right. So believers... We must go back to 15, remain in him. And I'm going to read this verse 15 and um, uh, 16, and then we'll, we'll move on. Well, maybe I'll save that to next because it's coming right up. Okay, let's go on to the next verse here then. Leave your hand right there then. We're going back to the book of Ephesians chapter 1. So, the, 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 so our di- identity is in Christ. He is the one that we identify with as a believer. And there's much more to that than that. Um, Then secondly, as we read in this book, Paul is saying, listen, I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you what God has done for you. He has blessed you with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And so when we say heavenly places, he's talking about spiritually God has provided everything you need. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, all the spiritual gifts, everything that he has needed for the body of Christ, he has provided it through his church, through people. Amen. And then let's look at verse number four. So according as and, and that's semicolon. And I, so he's kind of talking, pausing, making end points of, of, of reference with main clauses and all of these things. But look at verse four. He says, according as he had it chosen us. So let's let's back up and read into that. He says he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he had it chosen us in him. See, he has blessed us according to his plan, how he has purposed in each and every one of us individually. Amen. You can't, you can't impose all that God has done in cho- choosing us on each and every one because he chooses us all to do different things for distant, different uh, destinies for different things in life. But he says, according to he, according he has chosen us in him, this says, before the foundation of the world. So let's deal with that because I don't want to really get into this. This book, he deals with a lot of uh, predestination, um, foreknowledge, and uh, election. Uh, predestination equals, um, no, foreknowledge equals, equals election or choice, selection. And selection determines destination or predestination. But in this way, he talks to us about that. Now, and so what I'm talking about, I'm talking about what he says right here. According as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. When did he choose us? He chose us in eternity. We accepted him in what? In time. There's a difference between eternity and time. We live in time. God's in eternity. In eternity, he selected us because we chose him. But in time, we made the choice. Amen. Amen. All right. But let's look in here. Let's look at back to back to uh, John 16. That's a that's a, a subject I like to talk about too. that predestination, all that kind of stuff. Not that I have the answer because people been scholars been arguing over that for years. But verse 16, 
You have not chosen me, Jesus says, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatever whatsoever you shall ask of my father in my name, I will give it you. Well, when did Jesus choose you? He chose you in in, in time here. He's talking about these these here. But they were chosen in eternity, but in time he selected them. That's the elect, election, so on and so forth. But what I want you to know is here, here we learn God chose us in him, in Christ Jesus, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame. God chose us that we should be what? Holy and, without and without blame before him in love. We have been selected, we have been chosen, and we have been elected. And God did it because we chose him. He first loved us, and then we loved him. So let's look at, um, and, and I had to do the flip side over this be, because I, I looked at Romans chapter 12, verse 1. And I, a lot of stuff just come to me, and I, I just put it down as I'm thinking about it and reflecting. Let's go to Romans chapter 12, verse 1, and then I'm going to get ready here. I got to pick up the pace a little bit because I'm on at this one here, and I need to pick up the pace a little bit so at least I get a couple of them done before we go. I'm always overprepared because I know to me I get to talking, and I like to, to talk. <laughs> and sometimes I can get carried away. One thing lead to something else. That's why I write it on paper. I really don't need the paper, but I write it on trying to put some order in this stuff in. Here he says, Paul says this. Uh, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So he tells us that we are to be a living sacrifice. You know, in the Old Testament, they sacrificed dead sacrifices unto God. But we, in the New Testament, we are living because when Christ, we live, move, and have our being. And the sacrifice that we make is in presenting our bodies. See, not our spirit, our spirit, but what's represented in the earth is our bodies. Presenting our bodies a living sacrifice. What does that mean? It means there's a struggle to live for God. And, and you've got to make a sacrifice. I can, I can do it. I can, I can do it. Jesus says I can do it. The Holy Ghost said I can do it. When it comes, I'm going to say no. You might have to be like Joseph. That's why it's important to read the stories in the Old Testament. Joseph had to run. He Listen, he was sitting down there with that brick house, and he, he, he looked at her. He said, man, look here. And, all, all, and listen, I just try to use my imagination. She, she grabbed him by, the, by, the, by his coat, said, man, come on over here. You know, this, you know what's going on. And Joseph said, I can't do this. He took off and ran, left his coat behind. And sometimes you got to run. Because listen, if you're living in this world and you think that you're unattractive, well, let me tell you, there's somebody out there that's looking at you. I don't care who you are. There's somebody out there looking at you, Ebony. Hey. <laughs> somebody out looking at you, Diana. And he, they don't care. Listen, you might think that. They they might they might you they might they may say ain't no sense ain't no they say ain't no somebody they didn't got the word man you can't mess with that there but sometimes you know they go listen listen I'm not naive to think that there is no one out here trying to hit on my wife let me tell you I I don't even think like that you know why because I got a brick house brick house. Du -du -du. Da, 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 da. And I know she fine. See that? And I know she attractive. Yeah, but see, one thing about it, I know, I know I'm hers. You know why? Because I take care of my business. 
She got a man. See, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna handle my business. See, ain't no wishy washy stuff here. See, that's right. I, I, I'm gonna do. Ain't that, that right, brother Ed? We gonna take care of our business, ain't we? Amen. Yeah, I know my brother Washington ain't nothing, but listen here. Amen. Listen, God says, listen, he chose us. And because he chose us, he chose us to be holy. Amen. And without blame before him. That's who we are. Listen, this is who God says we are. Paul is reminding the believers, say, listen, these are the things that you have received of God. God has, he has blessed you. He has chosen you. And then this next verse says, God has predestined you to be his sons and his daughters. Amen. Glory to God. Verse 5, having predestinated us, look at somebody and say, I've been predestinated. God destined for me to be here tonight. Amen. In the, in the spectrum of, of God's time, he, he, he saw you here, but in time you showed up. Amen. 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 He says, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. God used Jesus Christ to bring us into the family by his son, Jesus Christ. So in Jesus Christ, we have life with God Amen. according to the good pleasures of his will. So here we see God has predestined or determined beforehand or preordained beforehand in his time that all his children, not just me, but all of his children, um, all his children to be adopted into his family by Christ to himself. See, he used Christ to bring us to himself according to his good pleasure and will. But who, but who becomes a child of God is left up to each person. See, in eternity, God saw you choose. And because you chose, he selected you to be his children. Amen. And so in time, you made the choice. But God chose you because you first chose him in eternity. Listen, you can wrap your mind all around it, but when, who can understand the knowledge of God and the will of God? But these are spiritual things that he's talking about. So let's look at John 3. It's left up to each individual, 3, 15 through 20. I like this. John, John chapter 3, verse 15 through 20. I know... That I'm sitting down with y'all here, and I know that y'all are getting, y'all saying, I'll be glad when he gets through. That's why I didn't tell you how many I had. <laughs> I got one for every verse. But, but, but let's look at chapter 3. Now, remember what I'm saying is that God has, has adopted us. The Spirit of God adopts us and bring us into the family through Christ Jesus. Now, look at what Jesus says here. He started out saying this in verse 14. I'll say it 15, but I'll read 14 to make it plainer. Jesus is speaking. He says, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of a man be lifted up. Jesus calls himself the son of God, the son of man, because he was born uh, of a virgin, he was born into humanity. He says, "If the the Son of Man must be lifted up, I must be lifted up." In John twelve and thirty two, Jesus said plainly, "If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself." But verse sixteen, fifteen, he says that I'll be. Verse fourteen says, "The Son of Man be lifted up." Verse fifteen says that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. What does that word should tell us? It, am I right about it? It speaks that you have, again, a choice, that you should not perish. God said, if I be lifted up, that I'll draw men unto me. But he says, Whos that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have what? 
God ordained that you should have everlasting life. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that here it is again, that whosoever believe it. Who is whosoever? Whosoever. It, it, and this is happening, and see, the whosoever was happening in eternity. When God says who, whosoever, and I saw that he rejected me, so, you know, you, 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 you just don't have a place. You know, you're know, you going to go over there where, where, where the devil and his angels, you know, hell was prepared for the devil and his angels, right? So in verse 17, or did I finish that one? For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That the world, that, that the world through him might be saved. Again, everybody has a choice. And he goes on and describes it. He that believeth on him is not what? But he that believeth not is what? He's condemned already because Adam ate from the fruit in the garden. And death passed upon all, man. And as a result of that, he's doomed to die. So, you know, that's why he says he's dead already. But if you believe on Jesus Christ, everything is right. So we're going to get one more down and then we're going to stop. So, number one, your identity is in Christ Jesus. Remember I said this is teaching. This is not preaching. Teaching is for edification to build up you so that you will be rooted and grounded in the word of God. And you know how to stand. You know how when the devil comes in and he tells you, you not anybody, you, you, I thought, you know, devil come. I thought you said you was a Christian. What you going to do? You going to say, I'll look at him and say, the devil is a lie. I know who I am. <laughs> I know who I am. <laughs> who are you? <laughs> the people that, and then, but he, not only did he, he, he gave us an identity. Our position is in heaven, but he gave us an identity in the earth. God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. All the promises of God are available to us if we meet the conditions. It's always based upon the conditions being met. Verse number uh, uh, four, God has chosen us. We didn't choose ourselves. When we, he, he chose us. Now, now watch this. When God said he chose us, he's given a reference to eternity. Because God is who he is. He knows the, the end from the beginning. And in time, or in, in eternity, he saw in time, and he saw you made a decision to choose him. So God says, in the beginning, begin. That's why the Bible in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 says, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. Then he goes down this list. And then he tells us the things that are, are those things that had been already. Well, where had they been already? They had been already with God in eternity, but we're in time. Okay, now, this is the last one I think I'll make it. Boy, I really want to get to that last one down there. Man, let me just skip. Let me, let me just go on and get through these. I'm just going to give it to you. I ain't going to give you no reference to them. We'll come back. I'm going to put a mark here. And then whenever I come back and teach, I'll finish this. So verse 5, he talks about he has predestinated us to be sons of, and daughters. Um, and then I said that he has adopted us, so on and so forth. In verse 6, God has made us accepted in, in himself. That's his grace. He's accepted us in the beloved. He's accepted us in the beloved. Uh, Second uh, Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 through it, it all means that if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation, a new creature. Seven says God has redeemed us. We know that the blood of Jesus was the atoning sacrifice that satisfied the Lord God for our sins. He has forgiven us of our sins according, the Bible says, according to his riches in glory. Amen. There are the riches of his grace. Amen. So we'll, now I'm giving you these. We haven't talked about them. I want to get to this last one. Verse number seven. I just said God has redeemed us by the blood of Jesus. That's why we don't belong to ourselves as Christians. 
He paid the ultimate price for our redemption. And, and when, the, when he comes back, he's coming back for that that he's already paid for. Amen. Amen? Okay. Now, let's go to um, verse 8. He talks, it, verse 8 continues from verse 7, and he says, wherein God had it abound. That is, God had it lavished himself on us in that he has imparted to us the rich treasures of spiritual wisdom and prudence, insight, wisdom, and knowledge. He's, 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 he's given to us to know that. And um, verse 9 and 10, God has made known unto us his will. What, uh, what he has made known unto us is this mystery that had been kept hidden from the world until Jesus came. And that is that God has opened up the door for both Jew and Gentile to come together as one in himself. See, there was a separation of all the nations, everybody. If you wasn't a Jew, you was, you, was a, you was a Gentile. But through Christ Jesus, both are merged together that in one, he might bring all things in together. And that's through Christ Jesus. And then here's um, verse number 11, 12. God has given us an inheritance. Everybody know what an inheritance is. Uh, you, you know, you, you, you left something for somebody. You know, you, you, you passed away, so you, you had a, a last will and testament. And as a recipient of whatever you, you, you own, or you, you, you say, okay, here it is. This is your inheritance. And so... We'll talk about that uh, at another time. But uh, we have a heritage. What I really wanted to get to before we go was this last one. We are sealed. Yeah. Let's look at verse 13 and 14. Now I want you all to get this. And, and now I'm going to read 12. Well, let me read 11. Uh yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'll read 12. Uh, that we, oh boy. Let me read 11. <laughs> in whom, um, in whom also we have obtained, we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated, predetermined, preordained according to the purpose of him, God, who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Verse 12, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first, what? Trusted in Christ. Let me ask you, have you trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior? You don't have to know everything, but you can put your trust in him. He says, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth. Let me stop right there for a minute. That's why it's, it's so important for you to get to the word of God. Let me tell you what's happening with, with, with the culture and with the people. You know, we've become so busy that we, it's difficult for us to find time to sit down and really study. Not study, just read the word. If I was to ask you right now, how many of you have spent at least 15 minutes in your word since Sunday? I, I don't know. I'm just asking. You don't have to raise your hand. Um, and I'm saying 15. How many of you have spent any time in your word since Sunday? Well, I'm saying this is a part of self-discipline. If you want to be, if you want to be in Christ, the Spirit of God is 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 unctioning you. The the unction of the Holy Spirit is tugging at you. You know what? I don't care what kind of how much words you got in you. Whatever that amount is, the Spirit of God will tug at you with that word you have desirous of you to sit and spend time with him 
in the Logos. And he'll give you a rhema. So you can sit under the Logos and then he'll give you a rhema. And, and, and we have to get to the word of God because it's in him we live, move, and have our existence. But God has sealed us with the spirit. Look at what he says here. Let me finish reading that verse there, and then I can go and close it out here. He says, verse 13, um, in whom also you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth. And I praise God for those of you who have listened on live stream that you're hearing the word of God today. The gospel of your salvation, that Jesus Christ is the one who saves us. He is the one that made salvation available for us. All we have to do is repent and ask for forgiveness and invite him into our life. Or in other words, receive him. And he says, in whom also after that you believe, and we have to believe, he said, you were sealed with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit of promise. That the Spirit was promised to those who accept Jesus Christ. And what is a seal? A seal is a, a, a insignia that's placed upon something that represents a higher authority. When you go get your bank loan, you put your signature on that, on that line. Am I right about it? You're not getting that money until your signature is on that line. <laughs> they, they got your, listen, and let me, let me, did I finish reading that? Seem like, verse 14, which is the seal of the Spirit by the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance. It is, what is earnest? I said, we, we only get the earnest of the Spirit or the fruit of the Spirit, we only get it now by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of, re of adoption is given to every one of you, of us, who repent. And the person who has God's Spirit has God's seal, that he belongs to God's heavenly family. There's other things, but I can save that till I come back. So you have been sealed until the day of redemption. The day of redemption simply means that Jesus paid the price, but he hasn't, he hasn't, he doesn't possess the 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 merchandise right now, if you will. You're still living out your purpose and your cause here on earth, but there's a day when Jesus is coming back. To take everything that he's, he's, he's paid for with his blood. Are you going to be in that number? Are you willing to submit to the will of God? Listen, I'm telling you, and I'm telling you from the word of God. Listen, you have a responsibility to follow God and do what. I shouldn't even say that, but you have a responsibility to be discipled. See, we can provide all the teaching that there is. We can preach, teach, do all that. We can have every program available. But if you don't make room, if you don't make yourself available, how do you expect to grow? How do you expect to know what God's will is for your life beyond simply being saved? Don't you know God has a destiny for you? He has Predetermined, there is a destiny for you. And, and what predestination destin <coughs> really means is that God has pre planned your destiny, and there is an end at the end of it, a destination that God has intended for you. And I'd like to think the ultimate destination is to spend eternity with Himself. Amen. Amen. So listen. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for uh, this lesson today that's really talking about the believer's uh, position and grace, in your grace, all that you've done for us, God. You have blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. God, you have chosen us out of this world. God, you have done such wonderful things for us. You have made 
all things possible. You have redeemed us by your own blood. You have forgiven us of our sins. You have called us to be holy and to be people of God that represent you well. You've called us to be all of these things. And we can be those things because we know that that's who we are. You never ask us to be or do anything that you haven't pre-prepared for us. You know it in time. Help us to acknowledge it in, in time and, and grab a hold of it and be all that you called us to be. There's no turning back. When, you, when we say yes to you, Jesus, there is no turning back. We cannot turn back. Although some may turn back, the ultimate goal is to press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling that you have set for us in Christ Jesus. And God, we thank you for that today. And so I pray for those that are listening today, those that, that, that have realized that we, they need to, to step up their game. They need to make a decision. They realize that their identity is in Christ. No longer will they allow the devil, will they allow their own flesh to intimidate them, to move them, to do things that are contrary to your will. The culture says that we can't do it. The culture says you're okay. But God, we know in you there is life and eternity. So bless your people as we uh, prepare to, to leave this place with blessings only you can provide from on high. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, uh, you've heard the word of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be your strength and help. So let's, let's put some uh, word, some seed on the word that we've heard. Amen. Can we get our stewardship confession today? It says um, we use uh, Proverbs 18 and 21 that says death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And then we want to make a declaration. We shall declare a thing, and it shall be accomplished unto us. That's what old Job was saying. In the old, he said, I will declare a thing, and it shall surely be established unto me. Let's go. Say, I am a steward of God's resources. God provides all I need. I confess that I have the wisdom of God and the mind of Christ. And I am financially responsible at all times. <laughs> and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, God can trust me with more and more because I am a sower. God continues to give me seed. Come on now. I give. Willingly and and we don't just say that. We have favor, grace, and abundance in Jesus' name. Amen. Give you, give the Lord some praise. Amen. We do. We have favor, grace, and abundance in Jesus' name. And we were talking about that grace, that unmerited favor. We didn't deserve it. But God saw us and he so loved us that he did it for us. All we have to do is accept it, meet the conditions that God has set upon us as being believers. And that is to believe. The only real condition is to believe, to trust him. Amen. So um, you can give on our cash app. We got a cash app. Or you can go to our website. Now, Matt and Chris, all right, Mick Fig Family, MCFC Family, um, dot org, and you can you can give on our website online there, and uh, you can do that, or you can just stop by the church during the week and um, and give your offering. And I want to encourage you to be encouraged in the Lord. I want to encourage you that to get in the midst. Don't you know? Get out the house. Get out and come out and be with. Some of the believers now, I think we're at the end of that. It's not over, but we're at the tail end of that, that, that those viruses. And although there are some that's manifesting, I believe that God is, uh, is, is helping us. So uh, let the spirit of the Lord govern your affairs. And so I thank God for you. So without any further delay, until um, Sunday, 
Uh, don't forget, we've got a, a Midwest Summit that's taking place beginning tomorrow in Topeka at, um, is, it, is it 900? Um, 926 Sherman. Nine, 926 Sherman at, at uh, 8 o'clock. So come on out to El Shaddai. 7 o'clock. Oh, I can't make that. Anyway, 7 o'clock. Oh, tomorrow night. Oh, so what, what, what? Oh, yeah, all right. My bad. I thought we had classes tomorrow. In the morning. In the morning. There are some classes. Okay. All right. My bad. Listen, it's been fun. God bless you. God keep you. Until next, until Sunday, may the Lord walk with you and keep you strong. God bless you.